So probably the most asked question about all these 12 fives was the gas port size and the gassing of the rifle. So there's a lot more that goes into how a rifle feels, how it shoots, the gassing and all that stuff than just the gas port size. But I get it, it's kind of a big deal. Um, you can't necessarily change it without going to an adjustable gas block. So you kind of get what you get with that. And so we'll go through and look at the different sizes. Um, I would say undersize is preferred because you can always drill it out. Um, most people aren't going to do that, so most manufacturers are going to oversize it if they're going to do anything, and then it's on you to change your buffer weights, um, put an adjustable gas block, things like that. But we're not going to get into all that. There's too many things to talk about. Um, we're just going to gauge these out and then um, see how they fare. So first things first, these two on the end here are not mid-length. They're the Roscoe Patrol length. So mid-length would be out a little bit further here. Um, closer to the end of the barrel, but either way, got less dwell time than you do with a carbine length. And if you're shooting suppressed or unsuppressed, Roscoe's goal with these was a little bit softer shooting rifle, keeping the reliability, being able to run it suppressed and unsuppressed. A lot of times with a 12.5 mid length, you run into some issues with reliability because you don't have enough dwell time unless you're running a suppressor. So again, there's a lot of different things that you can get into the weeds on with these things, but it's a cool, cool thing. I like to see different uh, manufacturers trying different things like this. So this looks to be a 0 0.81, 0 0.81 for both of these. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a 0 0.80. So 0 0.81. And it will not take the 0 0.82. So both of these. 0.81 for these patrol length. The KAK, everyone's favorite budget option. We're at 0.78 there. Kind of wants to do the 0.79. It just won't get all the way through. The White Oak, 0.78 if I had my guess. Just by looking at it, perfect. So KAK and White Oak matching gas port sizes. So that means they will shoot exactly the same. The gassing is exactly the same. That'll be perfect. Um, next is this Ballistic Advantage. Very much a budget rifle. That was a 0.75 or 0 0.075, I should say. So, yep, it's a 0 0.75 all day. And then this is a Roscoe that was used in Sons of Liberty Sage Edition. Pretty cool. Other than the fact it's government profile, but you gotta get over some things in life. And so 0 0.069 for the Sons of Liberty slash Roscoe. This is a Criterion. They're sort of known for being a little stingy on the gas port size. Not necessarily a bad thing. And that's a 066. Yeah. 066 for the Criterion. And then last but not least, we've got this Geisley here. You try not to notice stuff like this, but where they put the pin that goes on the top part of the gas block as well as the gas porthole itself is off-centered slightly. Does not matter. We can talk about pinning a barrel. Does that affect accuracy? Who knows? Does it make the gas block never want to come off? Absolutely. So the Geisley looks to be a 065. What do you know? Yep, 065 for the Geisley. So there you got it. Um, just a very small sampling of some of the barrels we have floating around right now. Surprisingly, the Geisley had the smallest gas port. KAK and White Oak armament 
kind of up here at the top. And then of course these patrol length were larger, um, but not by much compared to the, the white oak and the KAK. So there you have it. One other thing, you know, we could, we could talk about a million different reasons that a gun is efficient or not efficient. And if you look at the fitment of a gas block on a gas block journal, that can make a huge difference. So if you've got a sloppy fit, you're gonna be essentially creating a bleed off gas block. So you can get a superlative arms bleed off gas block for the same price as a just poorly made or poorly fitting regular gas block. Now you can't adjust the settings, but you can bleed off a lot of gas. Um, some people will say that'll carbon lock eventually, and uh, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, just depends. And are you willing to, to wait that long versus having just a better fit? Geisley will often bed their gas blocks with a retaining compound. And uh, you know that pretty much eliminates the, the leak there and makes the system more efficient. Now, if you have a, a barrel like the White Oak, for example, to pick on them, and maybe a larger gas port size than the Geisley, and you were to bed this and have this beautiful fit, and you had a very efficient bolt carrier, everything's fitting great back in the receiver, that might that gun might feel overgassed. Whereas the Geisley, if you don't have a, a good fit on your gas block, say you put, put a, a bad fitting gas block on there, um, and you've got a, a smaller port size, then now you might run into reliability issues. Is it Geisley's fault that the gas port's too small? Is it White Oak's that fault that it's too big? No, so it's a system, and that's why you test things, that's why you, you buy good components that you know work together well. Um, and sometimes you just have to swap different things around until you get the um, rifle running the way you want it to. So that's that. We'll, we'll continue testing every, every barrel that comes through the shop, and it's gonna just keep going into a database. So we'll hopefully, over the years, get, get a good collection of gas port sizes, as well as showing variations, because you know this is a sample size of two Roscos. They happen to have matching gas block um, or gas port sizes, so that's cool. Um, we could buy two more and they might be different. So we're gonna try to track things like that. So if you don't follow us already, um, we're starting to post these more often. And then of course our website is going to be where you can find blog posts and stuff like that with, with more info. So appreciate it.